fearless Bohemian pride and holy are the pillars of this house. Weaving spiders come not here. A quote from Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream, adopted by elite aristocrats and powerful businessmen of America to imply their Bohemian Grove retreat was nothing more than a recreational getaway. Except they didn't always live up to their motto. Retreats are types of group outings in which members take time to bond with one another, reflect on their purpose and aspirations, and cooperate on one or more specific goals. Various groups in America such as scouts, students, athletes, and clergy, participate in retreats as a way to withdraw from society temporarily in a quiet and secluded place where people can relax. In order to understand the Bohemian Grove, we must first talk about the Bohemian Club, which was supposedly formed in 1872 by an unknown number of individuals. Although it is aforementioned that in 1869, Junius Henry Brown said in explaining the Bohemian Club that New York's Bohemia had consisted of 15 or 20 journalists, the greater part of them young men of ability and culture, who had their rise and association about 12 years ago and flourished up to the commencement of the Civil War, which broke up the Bohemian fraternity, not only here but in other cities as well. The name Bohemia or Bohemian was chosen because it signified a cultured intellectual as opposed to those more simple-minded. However, this name could have been chosen just to inflate their own ego. One of the founding members of both the Bohemian Club and Bohemian Grove was Henry Edwards. Edwards was a stage actor and wanted to further his career by moving to New York City. In 1878, over a hundred individuals gathered in the Redwoods near Taylorville, California for a send-off party in Edwards' honor. The participants enjoyed the peaceful evening as they relaxed on blankets strewn about the Redwood thicket, and this festive gathering was repeated the following year and the location in the Redwoods became their usual encampment. Gradually, the club expanded to politicians and affluent businessmen, leading to more and more land being bought by members, producing what we now have today, known as the Bohemian Grove. Although Henry Edwards was a founding member, the ritual meetings year after year became a beast of its own. Only the original founders know exactly why they created the Bohemian Grove, but some theories are they wanted to create a relaxing atmosphere similar to the night of Edwards' send-off party. They they wanted to explore the arts as traditional bohemians would, or they were all lizard demons sent from hell to suck the soul and money out of your ass, and of course, keep it in a jar on the top shelf. In order to join the bohemian club, you have to have your finances in check. In order to gain entry into the bohemian grove, you must receive an elite invitation from someone already in the club. The club has a predominantly Caucasian membership, including some of the richest men in America America and more often than not, a majority of politically conservative statesmen. Similar to a country club, there is a initiation fee in order to join Bohemian Grove. This initiation fee is around $25,000, with $5,000 in yearly dues. This money goes towards the lavish spectacles that take place at the encampment, along with their dinner parties and dramatic performances, which are oftentimes described as lackluster. Nonetheless, people like you and me will never get to see these Gatsby-esque parties parties because the invitation to join is extremely limited, and only those with legacy get requested. Sorry, you just didn't get picked for the Bohemian dodgeball team sport. Prominent people known to have attended Bohemian Grove include all of the Bushes, Ronald Reagan, Mark Twain, Clint Eastwood, and Richard Nixon. In an article written by a former employee at the Bohemian Grove, she stated Jeb Bush was once denied a milkshake and threw a childlike temper tantrum. Apparently, there are milkshake rules at Bohemian Grove, and you can't serve one before 8 p.m., but Jeb clearly didn't get the memo. Richard Nixon, the 37th President of the United States, was recorded in 1971 saying, Let us look at, let us, let us look at Northern California. You and you know what's happening. San Francisco is gone. It's clear over. I don't know, but it isn't. It is just not a rally part of town. But the upper class in San Francisco is that way. The Bohemian Grove that I attended on time of time. The others have come there. But it is the most faggot goddamn thing you will hear. I never imagine a San Francisco crowd because it's just terrible. I mean, I have a lot of shaky hands in the light of San Francisco. 
Nevertheless, Nixon would attend the Bohemian Grove picnics, and Jeb still wouldn't get his milkshake. In September of 1942, an alleged meeting took place at the Bohemian Grove, where arguably the most influential venture in human history was debated. This meeting sparked the Manhattan Project. According to author Peter Phillips, many Grove members take pride in this piece of Bohemian history and flaunt it to new initiates. Ernest Lawrence, nuclear physicist and Nobel Prize winner, and J. Robert Oppenheimer, a theoretical physicist and wartime head of the secret laboratory Los Alamos. These two men were accompanied by committee heads, representatives from the biggest oil and electric companies, as well as presidents of Ivy League schools such as Yale and Harvard. Now, I may not be a bohemian, but this sounds an awful lot like weaving spiders to me. The web they managed to create through sheer mastery of science and innovation was of course the nuclear bomb. This undertaking led to the advent of nuclear weapons and brought the Second World War to an end. The Manhattan Project also dictated how the subsequent war with the Soviet Union would be fought or not fought depending on how you define the Cold War. There are more than likely various different traditions at Bohemian Grove that non-members will never know about. However, there are some that do give us an insight into their aristocratic world. This is where it gets weird. Bohemian Grove glorifies symbols and pictures of St. John of Nepomuk. They even have a large carving of St. John with one finger over his mouth, possibly signifying secrecy. However, it isn't entirely evident why the club's patron saint is John, but it could be because he was born in 14th century Bohemia and ended up being controversially killed by the king. Besides St. John of Nepomuk, they have an owl mask. God. There is a 30 foot tall owl effigy that rests at the front of the lake within the grove. And for all we know, that's a slumbering old god. Additionally, Bohemian Grove members set up and take part in large-scale theatrical performances, with a Grove play taking place each year involving around 300 people. Perhaps worshipping St. John, praying to an owl effigy, and dancing on stage are innocent. There is one traditional Bohemian Grove ritual that stands out among the rest, infamously known as the Cremation of Care. This event was originally like any other theater production, but according to Theater West, Image and Impact, in 1913, Cremation of Care was separated from other Grove plays and became an exercising of the demon to ensure the success of the ensuing two weeks. Yeah. Right. Whatever meaning this ceremony holds, it's probably not for everyone. The strange nature of the club and its ceremonies, including the towering owl statue, mad scientists, shady dealings, and former presidents all lead to one thing. A conspiracy. In the year 2000, Alex Jones wrote and directed The Dark Secrets Inside the Bohemian Grove. In his documentary, Alex Jones explains the history behind the grove and sought to uncover any villainous behavior going on within. He managed to enter Bohemian Grove with a film crew and record what is known to be the cremation of care ritual. Jones mentions that there is evidence of an entire surveillance system hidden in the Redwood Grove, with cameras concealed by trees and bushes. He also states that the owl statue is not just any regular symbol or mascot. He says it is an idol of Malak, Malak being an ancient pagan god a associated with child sacrifice practices. This documentary raised a lot of questions about elite societies. However, the gravity of the situation is muddied when you have sketchy performances mixed with typical Alex Jones speculations, like the fact that literal children are being sacrificed. A more digestible explanation would be that these societies take place for the elite to come together in order to monopolize their wealth and power, as well well as some casual nepotism and of course the occasional I scratch your back and you scratch mine. Perhaps Bohemian Grove acts as a fraternity bound by secrecy, available only, unfortunately, for those who make decisions about our world. This documentary was over 20 years ago. Nowadays, the Bohemian Grove seems rather forgotten. Abandoned by those who once sought the Grove for refuge, it is now shrouded in mystery and gatekept by members. I mean, the online Bohemian Grove member list is filled with literally 90% dead people. There is 
is no doubt in my mind that meetings for a select few occur in the Bohemian Grove. Whether it's country club dads enjoying nature or evil masterminds out to destroy the world, you can bet on one thing. They don't want you there.